All right, so I uh, was reading my friend's Intermediate Macroeconomics textbook and uh, reading on the solo growth model. Um, and so uh, it says one of the things about this model is that in the, in the long run, it reaches a steady state. And so this is a really interesting part of the book, in my opinion, right? And uh, so what it talks about is an inc oh, it equates, for this model, uh, increases in the labor force are equal to increases in population. So the rate of population growth is equal to the rate of growth in the labor force. And so in the long run, you reach a steady state where there's a certain amount of capital per worker, a certain amount of uh, output in there for consumption per worker as well. Um, anyways, one of the things uh, it talks about is that it holds productivity constant, uh, total factor productivity, as it's called. And um, so an increase in the population and the rate of growth in the population would mean um, lower output per worker because the capital um, that is being produced, I guess, uh, you have to get some of that capital and give it to the new workers. And since it's not a one-time thing, it's an increased rate of growth, then this is something that keeps going on and on. And so there's lower output and consumption per worker. We can have more total production, but it have fewer per worker. Anyways, uh, one of the things that this assumes uh, is that labor is homogeneous, and which in the real world is not the case. Because people have different skills and different talents and things like that. Someone uh, might be a faster learner than someone else in general, or someone might just be really good at learning a certain subject, like math or something, right? And um, in the same way that capital is heterogene heterogeneous, labor is heterogeneous because labor has different skills and stuff. There's skilled labor of a wide variety of skills, right? And some more or less than others. And then there's unskilled labor, which we consider, you know, for those jobs that are what you would call the worst jobs we have, right? Usually things like picking cabbage and things like that. Anyway, so, you know, in the same way capital is heterogeneous, sometimes uh, an increase of capital equipment might, uh, say, increase your productivity in, or increase efficiency at producing widgets by 10%. Another piece of capital equipment might increase it by only 2%, right? Or, or take it another way, another piece of capital equipment might increase the productivity or efficiency at producing fishing rods, right? So capital is heterogeneous. It doesn't always perfectly substitute from one area to another, and labor is kind of the same way. Uh, unskilled labor cannot substitute for skilled labor. Skilled labor generally can substitute for unskilled labor. Anyways, uh, the point I was trying to make is that sometimes uh, because of heterogeneous labor in a population, an increase in the population can uh, itself lead to increases in productivity or total factor productivity, as it's called in the book. <clears throat> and so in those cases, you could have um, an increase in the, um, what you call it, output and consumption per worker. But if increases in the population do not, so it's an empirical issue there. So. In cases where population growth rates increase and it does not lead to increased productivity, then you could have a situation where, yes, you would have uh, lower output and consumption per worker. But anyways, I just uh, wanted to talk about that, that little uh, point in the model, because uh, I just wanted to make the point that sometimes increases in the rate of population growth can lead to total factor productivity. Because suppose someone makes a contribution by making an invention or something else that um, helps productivity. For example, a new business practice or management practice, or maybe uh, you know something having to do with the way currently existing products or uh, equipment are used. So maybe they come up with a, a new way to use things that already exist and to thus make us more efficient and raise total productivity. So yeah, uh, but it's not necessarily the case. It can be the case, right? That's an empirical issue. I just wanted to talk about that. So yeah, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. And so far, I think the book is pretty cool overall.